Solomon's Talk was designed to curate the stories of solo moms globally. As a facilitator of this platform, I aim to create a peaceful environment where you can share your heart, feel loved, and get the advice you need. So if this sounds like you, why not RSVP for our next virtual meetup? The link is below. It's where you can retreat from the chaos of your life so you can recharge, connect with other moms, and get answers to your burning questions. Remember, you're not alone and you don't have to parent in silence. In this series, Why Solo Moms Struggle, I talk about in the last video that one of the reasons and the number one reason solo moms struggle is because we don't love ourselves. This is the second in the series. I'm going to talk about the second reason I believe we as solo, married, divorced, widowed moms struggle. And this number two is we don't set goals for ourselves. I know that a lot of people celebrate New Year's by creating New Year's resolutions. And it's it's a good thing to think about your future and to think what you want to happen. Maybe you feel bad about what happened in the last year and you just want to make yourself feel like you want to do better. But New Year's resolution has proven to be a kind of failed experiment. For instance, there was a survey done of Americans who had created New Year's resolution. And of those surveyed, 92% failed to keep those resolutions that they had made for themselves. And the reasons they gave were their resolution was unrealistic. You know, they forgot about it. Just things that doesn't happen if you're really serious about setting a goal for yourself, right? But the fact remains that New Year's resolution is not a good way to live in purpose. And another Another, one of the biggest examples of that is that on January 17, every year, 16 days after those resolutions were set, we celebrate Ditch the New Year's Resolution Day. It boggles the mind why you would waste time setting resolution and ditch them 17 days later. So no wonder we fail when we build our lives dreams on one day out of the year resolution, something that has nothing to do with us personally. So having said all that, what do we do? I mean, we want to do better, right? Making a New Year's resolution sounds like a good thing, right? So what do we do? I say, and I've heard a lot of people say this, use your age. I've been doing this for the last 10 years. Use your age to set your goals and set goals. Decide what you want and set goals to achieve them. And the reason I like the age thing is that it gives you something to look forward to each year that's very personal to you. Your age. And we know women how we feel about our age, right? I mean, we always have some type of emotion wrapped up in that age. So the, the reasons that I like the birthday age connection to setting goals is that one, the birthday creates an emotional trigger. That's why we celebrate it, right? It's something we look forward to. Well, most of us do. And if we don't, that's even more reason to set goals right? The second reason I support setting goals using your birthday is that it creates a sense of urgency. There's really no urgency. There's no re real urgency surrounding New Year's Eve, right? But if you know that you want to achieve something, let's say you're a younger woman who want to have babies by a certain age, then <laughs> it creates a sense of urgency because you know that beyond a certain age, you may not be able to have those children children that you want. And so whatever your goals are, if you set them using your next birthday as the timeline, then it creates a sense of urgency for you and it's personal to you. And, and so this age thing creates a framework for taking action. And as Tony Robbins says, emotions create motion. So by you emotionally involved with that trigger, your age, it allows you to 
be more proactive in creating goals and sticking to them because where focus goes, your energy flows. So what is my plan of action for setting goals? One is you decide and commit. What is it you want? Now, there are lots of ways that you could do this. You could go about this. You could just write down what you want in notebooks. It's good to write your goals down because really and truly, they only are dreams in your head if all you do is think about what you want. But decide what you want. What is it you want out of life? What? What do you want? And then commit to getting that. Now, there's a gap there for some of us, right? Because we know what we want, but we are either afraid, unable, or unwilling to commit to what gets us to what we want. And so we have to work on that mindset that tells us it's not attainable. It's never going to happen. What's the point? So mindset is everything. And we have to get over this story that we tell ourselves. From where I stand, I want to know from you, what is it you want? What do you want? Commit to that and decide. So decide what you want and then commit to achieving what you want. The second thing is you need to create a plan of action. And by planning, I mean, this is active planning because you're going to try to figure out how you go about getting what you want, right? There are a couple of frameworks, official frameworks that were designed mostly for for business, really. And one of them is the SMART goals, S-M-A-R-T goals. I don't particularly like the SMART goals especially the A in SMART, which is attainable. So SMART is specific, measurable, and then the A is attainable, which I am like, if why bother setting goals for your comfort zone? I am fully fully support setting goals that are outside your comfort zone. So this is why goal setting can be uncomfortable because you're heading, you're aiming for things that don't seem possible. But don't let this smart goal framework restrict you from dreaming big, right? You can use it as a a guideline, a guidepost, but don't get hung up on this attainable thing. And R stands for relevant and the T stands for timeline or time frame. And in this case, because we're using our age and our next birthday, our timeline is 365 days, but that can be broken down into 90 days, 30 days or whatever those goals are, right? So let's say, for example, I'll use weight loss. It's an easy one. You want to lose weight. That is not a goal. That is an objective, which brings me to the second framework, which is OKRs. This is a framework used by Google, Microsoft. Think of all the big successful tech companies. They all use this framework. It's explained in a book called Measure What Matters by John Doerr. And it talks about how Google uses OKRs to become a successful company. Lots of big tech companies use this framework. And so the reason this framework is successful is that they all in OKR stand for objective. And so you wanting to lose weight is an objective, but your key results, that's the KRS, is losing 50 pounds. So I prefer the OKRs framework because it's simple and it's specific. And so you could start with the OKRs framework. And this is something I teach in my full course. So I won't get into too much details about it, but you could use both framework and combine them for your personal benefit. And so you wanting to lose weight is an objective. You want to lose 30 pounds at, by in 90 days by eating less meat is your OKR, right? And so it's a much easier way to set goals. The third step in setting goals, creating goals is to design a monitoring system. Because one of the reasons people who set New Year's resolution said that they failed was because they didn't have a way to track and monitor the goals they set for themselves. So with the weight loss, you could get a buddy, someone who supports you, just not anyone, just someone who supports your goals to lose 30 pounds. Because, you know, you have friends who 
really don't want you to look better than them. It, it's just a fact. So be careful who you choose to help to support your journey. And in addition to getting support from individuals, you get a tracker, you know, something that you could track your weight with. That's a scale. And it could be a weight loss planner or an app on your phone. And you measure, you go in, you know, once a week, once a month and you weigh yourself. And first, before you start, you weigh and measure yourself. And a week in, two weeks in, whatever you choose, you measure and weigh again and you see how far you've come in achieving your goals. And then you make note of that, however you keep in record, and you move on from there. I have a way of how I like to frame that is that you review and if things aren't working out the way you planned, then you reframe. Maybe 30 pounds in 30 days was too much, right? Probably is. So maybe you want to make it 10 pounds in 30 days or 30 pounds in 90 days. So that's reframing those goals. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. You can always change your mind. They're your goals, right? (laughs) And then the third thing is if they're working the way you want them to, the way you thought they would, and even if, you know, you didn't exactly lose what you wanted to lose, but you did lose something. Two things. One, pat yourself on the back. You did it. You did it, right? Even if it's two pounds out of the 10 you wanted to lose, you did it. Celebrate the wins. Learn to celebrate you. Learn to be grateful for the good things that happen in your life. And you being two pounds lighter because that's what you wanted is a good thing for you. So celebrate that win. Pat yourself on the back and celebrate the win. And after you've done jumping up and down and telling yourself how good you look, do the Wonder Woman stance. I like to do this reclaim, just reclaim that stance because yes, you did it and you go girl. So that is my method for setting goals for yourself, for setting, having a successful goal strategy for your life as a solo mom. If you found this helpful let me know in your comments and also please follow this podcast so you'll know when new episodes are available thank you if you like this content i have a free download so click the link below and for your email all you have to do is enter your email and i have a free download for you if you're serious about setting goals for your life going forward i have a full course that you could sign up for and i will help you I will coach you, I will mentor you through the process of setting objectives and goals for your life so that you can live your life in abundance. Thanks for listening. Are you still setting New Year's resolutions only to ditch it halfway through January? Or are you struggling to keep up with life because it seems you've lost control? Sign up for Successful Goal Setting Strategies for Solo Moms and let me walk you through setting up a plan for your life based on your birthday. Join the waitlist below and put a plan in place so you can have joy in the middle of life's chaos. Remember, you're not alone and you don't have to parent in silence.